All right, guys. Um, thanks for coming again today. Um, obviously, I was hoping we would never have a press conference after you know a loss, um, but better to better to have one early in a non-conference game, as I told our kids, as we close the chapter last night and move on to the next one. But uh, um, you know, it's it's never easy. You know, and again, as, as you play this game of football, you learn that there's a lot of you know good teams out there. Uh, Western Michigan being one of them. Uh, there's a lot of parity in college football as you look around the country and see how things go, uh, whether it's in the ACC or you know outside the ACC. And uh, we didn't play our best ball game, and that's the most disappointing thing. And I think physically we're prepared. Um, you know, I'm not sure mentally we were. And you know, I can't look inside as I told the kids like I can't crack your head open and look inside and see what's in there. Where's your mind been all week? What are you tweeting? What are you snapping? I don't know. You know. Um, but, you know, I certainly don't think, you know, there was the energy and emotion, which I might have mentioned after the press conference or, or I've been thinking about it for two days, you know, since the, since the game. But we didn't execute. I mean, our passing game was good. I don't think our protection was good. I don't think we, you know, we rushed the football like we need to. I don't think we blocked like we need to. I don't think we stopped the run, you know. Uh, so when you talk about, hey, stopping the run, did it open up your RPO? Shoot, we didn't do either one. We were, you know, we allowed them to be two-dimensional. And, uh to me, it goes on focus and, and making plays and, and uh, in details. And, um, you know, structurally, obviously, we could do some things better, but we didn't. And uh, you live and learn. That's why we coach a game of football, and that's our job to, to fix it and, and make it better. So uh, we got a, you know, 3-0 New Hampshire uh, football team coming in here, which I think is a good football team. And if you don't come ready to play and you don't get your minds locked into what you need to do and, you know, and, and you don't think you're going to just throw your helmet out on the field and, and it's going to take care of it and make plays for you, You'll have another problem because they're a good football team. Uh, they got a quarterback that'll scramble around and make plays. They break the pocket a lot, and he's athletic. He throws a nice catchable ball. He's smooth, um, and uh, and I think he's accurate. So you're facing another guy. They're all over the place. Um, it, you know, obviously in 2021. So um, you know, I'm impressed with their football team. I think they're tough, um, and I think they schematically do a lot of good things. So questions. How do you correct to make sure that you have the proper mental attitude before games going forward? You know what, I thought it was good last week, you know. Uh, I, I think after a loss, uh, I don't think anybody, you know, came, you know, I think it's an eye-opener, you know. Um, as much as we talked and put that Tennessee game to, to rest, you know, I don't, you know, they may be shaking their heads, yeah, yeah, I got you, coach, I got you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I purposely didn't put, you know, after the UMass game on this little TV out here, you, you, let, you know, last week you saw that field pass, maybe if you walked in there going last week, you didn't see a field pass. You know, I said, do not, do not put that up there. I don't want our guys thinking anything about it. Um, you know, just all those things, you try to suppress it mentally. Um, but, I, you know, I can't take care of it. But I would hope, you know, getting punched in the face Saturday afternoon, you know, I hope that wakes you up. Uh, you know, you're, in your, you're in year seven. You have a, a veteran, a bunch of veteran guys on the scene. Did you assume that you were sort of past the point where a mental letdown after a big win? Was yeah. Up? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you think you're there. It's something you prepare for. You, you know, you talk about it and, and – uh, you know, and again, I, you know, you say mental, I, I, I say that guy executed. I say LB, you know, was on fire. Uh, we wa went back and watched a bunch of RPOs from last year and just looked at you know, what we've seen this year in RPOs and how we did it, what we did wrong, what, you know. Um, and, um, you, know, you know, you don't see much of a difference, you know, what we're doing structurally and, and, and things evolve. But I think they're a big time RPO team, which I told you. And, and I, I was impressed with the quarterback, and he made shots too. So I don't want to say it's all mental either. Physically, you got to make some plays, and and we didn't stop the run. When you made it two dimensional, if they want to throw the pass, at least stop the run. Uh, but we didn't do that either, and that's even more disappointing. Okay, obviously, your defense is designed, designed to stop the run. When you do that, maybe do you leave yourself open to pass? Certainly, you leave yourself open to some RPOs. Yes, you know you, you always do if you're if you're committed to stopping the run. But the worst part about it is when you're committed to stopping the run, you don't stop the run, Jerry. You know, especially in a four-minute situation when you know they're going to run the ball. But, you know, what happens if they start dinking, dinking, what's everybody thinking? Let me go help somebody else. Let me go do somebody else's job, and you don't do your own job. And that's when things leak out on you. Um, so, you know, you, to play great defense, um, you know, you, everybody's got to do their job. You can't think, well, they keep throwing it over my head, so I'm just going to try to do this, or maybe I'm going to run around the, the tackle and get a pass rush in and let them run it down your throat. And, um, you know, th those are some things you see out there. And, and uh, we'll get it fixed, but everybody wants to go make a play, but you got to do it within the framework of the, of the defense or the offense. Did you make any adjustments to the RPOs? Yeah, we had a couple adjustments in there. We stopped them earlier, and, and then they made some adjustments, and we made some adjustments, and you know they looked to the sideline, so there's some things that get you there, too. 
you know, um, it was a good mood, you know, uh, like a normal, uh, to be honest with you. And that's kids in 2021. Um, you know, uh, they already got the lift in. They already saw film. You know, so they each, you know, we go lift, meet, flip, um, and uh, they got to see see the videotape already. I think they got corrections. We come in here and watch special teams, and then we put it to bed. Um, but you know, the mood was good. Um, you know, obviously we're locked in during special teams. You know, because we make all the corrections, whether you're you know on the punt team or not. We do that all together in here as a as a team, and then you know, and then close the chapter. But the mood was good. There was you know no you know no head hanging, um, and uh, you know that's what you expect. Did you want the mood to be good? I've gone back and forth. I've, I've, I've given up the, I've given up the, um, um, the job of trying to read and analyze. Okay, because <laughs> you can't. You know, I think they went in and got a workout and they came back to work. And you know, we talk about 24 hours. And you know, last year I think there was one game I forget it was early where the kids were like really, really down. It might have been after our first loss. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. Uh, sometimes we can claim to be, but you know. It's hard nowadays. You mentioned that <clears throat> getting having a loss as early in the season, you were able to be able to move past it and just kind of get it out of the way in, in a sense. But do you worry that it could linger and not, you know, as, as the weeks go on? You worry about you know wins and dealing with success lingers, and you and you know, and then the, the adversity as well. So anything can linger. You know, we got to just do our best job as coaches to try to uh, get them together and pull pull it together and and, and go out and beat New Hampshire. The so I don't worry about lingering. Your message to the team is move forward, but there's some pretty frustrated fans, students. What's your message to them? I'm worried about the guys in this room, you know, um, and you know everybody in here knows what happened, and I can't, I can't, I can't help the fans. I apologize to them, and, uh, and 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 try to prevent it from happening again. Pat, when it was uh, fourth and six in the fourth quarter, ten minutes to go, did you think about punting? I thought about it, you know, and I've always said this, you know, I thought about it, and next time maybe I, you know. I felt like punting, and Whip felt like he had a good call. And uh, and again, I always kind of go with where the you know if he was like, oh, I don't know, we're punting. You know, if he's like, hey, I got this, then we you know. So you know, you have regrets as coaches. I mean, you know, you look at the score of the game, and we gave up 24 points off of turnovers, three real turnovers, and two turnovers on downs. And that fourth and six is one of them, where we don't convert on a fourth down, and and we want to be you know a little bit more risky if you if you want to say it times like that and and you trust Kenny Pickett you trust your wideouts to to make plays and and get the right depth and and, and do all those things and sometimes you win sometimes you lose and uh, you know I haven't you know gone back to look and see what uh, the analyzers say that that we go I know I've got it sitting on my desk uh, but uh, go back and see what they thought punter go but I would imagine any uh, analytics would probably have said you need to go but uh, and you can, you can listen to analytics, but to me it comes down to a coach's decision. So I don't blame analytics. Uh, we got to either execute or I got to say, hey, we can't execute, so we're going to punt. But I also know that our defense wasn't stopping anybody. You know, we we're on the field for 40 minutes, okay? And when you're on the field for 40 minutes, you'd like to keep our offense on the field more than just 20 minutes, which is what we were. Um, you know, do I regret kick, not kicking an onside kick with 348 or whatever was in the game? Yeah, I mean, it's a little too early, but if you're never going to get the ball back, you know. You want to uh, kick an onside, but then you give them the ball right there, and then you guys will be asking me on <laughs> on Monday, like, why'd you do that? Um, but you know, and again, I saw a little different attitude out of the defensive guys when they went out there. First two plays of that that four minute drive at the end, they were flying around a little bit different, like juice. And I know if we'd have got off the field, our offense was going to score, we we're going to win the game, but we didn't get that opportunity, unfortunately. Do you feel like you're defending with thinking too much at times? Because like you talked before about them playing fast, you feel like that was part of the problem. A little bit of thinking, a little bit worried about like you know what's going on back there. What can I do to help? You know, I think it's a little yeah. You know, I talked to one guy that said I was thinking too much. I should have just played. You know, and that was a guy that shouldn't be thinking at all. Pat, uh, you, you know, at the beginning I was talking to Coach Lester. He mentioned he watched a lot of film from the '15 game when he was at OC at Syracuse. Right. As a as a coach. You know, how much of is it, you, everybody has a system, you've been very successful defensive coach in your career, you have a way that you play. At the same time, how do you weigh that against, well, man, I don't want to be so predictable that guys can look at my tape from six years ago and figure out what we're going to do. Well, and they're, they're the same way. They did the same stuff, too. So we went back, you know, I think I mentioned it to you on Thursday, you know, that we went back and watched them as well. So, um, you know, I told you his fingerprints are all over the offense, and Tim's a great coach. So um, it's predictability, and it, it comes down to making plays and who's who's 
who's making the plays and who's not. Um, but we've been running the same defense for I don't know how many years. And you know, after one game, you know, I guess you guys think it's broken. So it can be it's broken, broken for a Saturday. We'll find out this Saturday. So after the game, um, so that Owen was out when Cradle came in at center and Wilson. How would you assess those two guys? How they played when they came in, and is Owen to be available this weekend? Yeah. Um, on the last question, I'm not sure. Um, but Jerry usually asks me that question, so I'm shocked you asked me that, John. Um, but uh, it's your boy. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, Cradle played okay in there. You know, obviously, you know, he doesn't get 1,000 reps in there, so it's like having your backup quarterback that gets limited reps uh, in a ball game. So, you know, he had a couple of MAs and some things that we needed to do better. Uh, so anytime you lose one of your five up there that's starting and playing a lot of reps, you know, you lose your continuity. Um, and then, um, Keldra came in um, and did a solid job, gave up some pressures um, for the plays he was in there. So, you know, we got to get better there as well. But, um, you know, he's getting some of his first reps. Is there still a possibility for a guy like Nick Boyd or Nick to play guard? Yes. Um, you've been Sean McDonald for a long time. Can you talk a little bit about that your relationship with him and some of the things you've done with him over the years? Yeah, I mean, Sean's a great guy, you know. Uh, again, I don't have this, you know. We worked together one summer, and and uh, he was a coach at Columbia, where my dad coached prior to uh, passing away. Um, you know, just super guy. I've known through the years when he was, you know, at New Hampshire when I was, you know, coaching at uh, um, at Rhode Island. So he's just a super guy and a, and a and a tough guy, tough guy, old school coach that does it the right way. When you grew up, where you made a one point five million dollar house for you. Play at the time, and how did you clean up the mess? Jeez, Jay, you're crazy. I thought we talked about this already, but um, I don't know if I don't know. You know, back then I was in college. I don't remember the, the price of the house, but you you do. I don't know if you got the address or something, and, and googled it. But uh, you know, for everybody else that doesn't know, we we, we painted a house together, and and uh, bucket of paint got spilled in the bedroom. We were scrambling to clean up a bucket of bucket of paint off the carpet. So. Um, we've been through stress together and adversity, so, you know, uh, not, she didn't say it to us, so we were good, good cleanup. Have more tarps. Did you talk about a wall while you were? Uh, no, because it was such a big house, I was not dead in, he was over there, so. And I know you've been, you were working on yak yards with receivers coming into the season and avoiding tackles. To that point, the game Jared Wayne had, and how much has he come in? Jared's done an unbelievable job, and they really all have. Um, ironically, you know that one drill I throw bags at him. I got seven guys last year, but last week between running backs, you know, tight ends, and, and receivers, uh, they weren't happy with me knocking them out. Um, but uh, um, you know, we've made some strides there, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But our guys are running through tackles and, and making plays and, and, and getting those extra yards, and, and uh, Coach Barron's done an outstanding job with that as well. So um, you know, it's it's player and coach. So, I think you lead your team in yards after the catch. Is that kind of a surprising stat for him to be? Um, not really. I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, it's kind of he's he's a football player and and uh, he's big, he's strong, and um, and again, it all depends on what catches you know you're getting. He's catching balls over the middle. He's able to get vertical. Um, you know, sometimes if you're running out routes or something like that, you're you know you're too close to the sideline to get more yak. But uh, Jared, we've been you know been happy with Jared, you know, Tay Sear, and uh, you know obviously uh, Jordan Addison. Is he only got one carry? Is that a rotation thing, a game script thing? Or you know, that? it comes down to just, you know, we, we got to get him more carries, and he will get more carries. Uh, he'll get more carries this weekend. We'll, we'll, we'll set it up. I'll make sure it happens. But I got a lot of faith in Izzy, and, and uh, he's going to get more carries this weekend uh, for sure. Uh, but it just kind of, as the game went and, you know, and how it was going, um, just kind of what you felt. Is this the uh, best passing game you've had here today? Um, you guys could go back and look at the stats. I don't know, um, but I, uh, my test tells you the receivers are pretty good and Kenny Pickett's pretty good. Uh, I want to run the ball better. Yeah, you guys have been searching for that solution of the run game for a while now. I mean, it's you know, yeah, you, still at searching. Some point you can only scheme so much. How much of it is just about the five guys up front beating the, beating the guy? That you know, like up front? this past week and you know, normal times, I'd say it's the guys up front last week. I mean. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't get a hat on hat, which is what I talked with the offense. Just like we got to get our hats on somebody and let the tailbacks have a chance. 
Um, but we're turning guys loose for whatever reason. And, and somehow, some way, we got to get a hat on a hat and get our bodies on their bodies. You don't have to knock them up, you know, into the goal, you know, onto the goalpost. But we've got to get some, some, you know, some hats on hats and and, and put people on people. And, and uh, I was not happy with that. Thank you, defense gave up a big yard number, but it also seemed like you you didn't let enough on possession downs. You didn't get any turnovers. You let them get some touchdowns in the red zone. Which of those do you focus on more, the, the total or those specific plays? It's specific plays. I mean, we only gave up five explosive plays on the day, which is crazy. But, you know, you go down to, I mean, everybody looks at the, the yardage and all that stuff. And, and again, it's stats. And I always say stats are for losers, you know, but pull the stat together yards per minute that you're on the field. Okay. Pull up our offense per play you're on the field. I mean, you know, defense is on the field for over 40 minutes. I mean, uh, two thirds of the game, they're on the field. And, you know, and again, to their, you know, to their issue, they couldn't get off the field, whether it was a P and 10 problem. And uh, so it wasn't all these explosives. I mean, we had, you know, the biggest explosive is, is uh, really two big explosives are, you know, uh, MJ Devonshire falls down and, uh, and, and, and um, Brandon Hill knocks the heck out of 31. I mean, those are your two big ones. And then that really that 32 yard run in a four minute situation um, where, you know, we got a safety kind of runs out of the box, which we've worked a million times and, and, and doesn't do his job. They aren't going to hand it off the jet sweep guy. And uh, we don't fit it right. Um, we got a defensive end that runs up the field. Those are, you know, like, would you think they were going to throw the ball in a four minute situation? Those are what, you know, tells me, like, we're, you know, what are we thinking about out there? You said after the game you felt like you guys maybe should have blitzed more. Do you still feel that way after your yeah. loss? Yeah. A different kind of blitz, but yeah. When you're looking at things like that or in game adjustments, how? How's that work between you and Coach Bates? Who's I got to do a better job. You know, you know, I trust our defensive staff, um, and uh, I really trust our defense staff. But there's times where I just got to, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make decisions on offense, and you know, and uh, the things, you know, things were going fast, and we were scoring in one play, it's three plays and out, and you know, punt alert, you know, get ready for the next series, and, and to just hang on the headphones on the defense the whole time. It's tough, but I'm gonna have to get over there a little bit more just to see what's going on. And we didn't we didn't make in-game adjustments like I'd like to and I'm used to. And as I watch the video, you know, I taught our defense stuff. As I watch the video, you know, from from the video session, you know, as I watched on Saturday night and Sunday morning, I'm looking at it going, you know, if I just saw that from the box, I know what I'm doing. And we didn't do that. And I I, I gotta put it on me. Um, because ultimately I gotta get it done somehow, some way. Um, shoot over the weekend I thought about might be a head coach sitting up at the damn box this week. Just coach, just coach from the box, Larry. What stood out to you when you, were, when you had a chance to analyze everything? What, what stood out? You said. Yeah, I mean, just just little little tweakings that we have to we have to make, and uh, and we didn't make those. And and again, it goes it goes back to you know right here me, and um, you know somehow I got to get it done. So. Yeah, well, there's no hard thought about that too, Jerry. There's no question about it. No doubt about it. I see a lot up there. We have anything final? It's hard to see on the field. Yeah, Pat, you've got a large discrepancy because of the eligibility thing of the extra year between, I mean, Trey's like almost as old as some of us, right? And you've got, you still got freshmen in there. I mean, what, how do you make sure that you pr avoid like the old guys sticking with the old guys and the young guys, you know, like there's clicks that they click that have lost. How do you make sure when you've got such a discrepancy that, that the team stays together? And then I guess, have you seen mentorship opportunities maybe pop up that wouldn't have otherwise because you have, you know, a, you know, 24 year old, 23 year old. Yeah. I mean, each room takes care of itself, and then the offense and the defense gel together. And I think we got to, you know, I'm not worried about that at all. Our kids are, t you know, they're tight and have fun together. and. And obviously, there's guys in the back of the room, the, the freshmen, the puppies uh, that, that, that want to play more. And hey, how about me? And I, you know, I can put it on tape. I can show you why. Just come ask me why. Um, and um, but you know, our, you know, we've got an eagle in each room. We got a leadership council guy in each room that kind of is in charge of making sure everything sticks together. We take, you know, we try to mentor those young guys. It's a big brother, you know, whether it's Jordan Ass Addison with Jaden Bradley. I mean, we got guys that are on those guys just to make sure they're doing things the way we do it, and they are with the culture, not against it. Coach, thank you very much. Why would P and 10 be a football time? Okay, P and 10 is the first play of possession. So P and 10 is just like a first and 10, but it's the first play of the possession. And there's different things offenses do on P and 10s as opposed to they gain a first down and then that's a first and 10.
Good question, Jerry. I like that.